What do you think of when you hear the term migration? A lot of people think of, you know, big flocks of birds that travel over massive bodies of water going north or south or south to north depending on the time of year. Or some people think about the great migrations that happen in the continent of Africa. Well, I'm going to show you a different type of migration that happens in the state of Florida twice every year. And this one is in the fall. Come on, this is pretty crazy. The east coast of Florida is a pretty unique place. You have these two similar but vastly different ecosystems just a stone's throw away from each other. On one side, you have a huge body of brackish water, a mixture of fresh and salt. In this instance, the Indian River Lagoon. Things are generally a little bit more relaxed here. On the other side, you have the mighty Atlantic Ocean, complete with frothing white-capped waves and hordes of deep water creatures. These two ecosystems are connected by an inlet, a tidally influenced area that can be full of beautiful turquoise seawater or darker brown brackish water from the lagoon. And our journey begins in the Indian River Lagoon where a small group of willets are busy searching for crabs. And it doesn't take them long until one of them has a successful catch. Hunting crabs works quite well in the calm waters of the lagoon, but those crab claws definitely present a problem. A quick dunk in the drink, a couple of stabs with its beak, and that poor little crab is now clawless and defenseless. It may seem like these birds are working together here by sharing their food, but that isn't the case at all. One bird gets the other bird's beak, while the third quickly escapes and devours the crab. Meanwhile, this adorable little plover complete with a sand-covered beak watches the willets squabble for food. But these awesome birds aren't the reason why we are here. This is... Thousands of mullet, a fish that feeds on decaying leaves and algae, are making their annual fall journey south. And where there are this many fish, you can bet there will be plenty of predators looking for an easy meal. An ominous fin slices its way through the water as our first predator arrives on the scene. The mullet, fighting for their lives, do the only thing they can. They leap out of the water. The water explodes like fireworks in the night sky as more fish seek shelter from what's chasing them. For a brief moment, these fish become part of our world, but what's currently happening above the water means absolutely nothing to these fish. They are more concerned with what's coming from the dark water below, and that single fin that was slicing its way through the water is now joined by another. Two bottlenose dolphins working together to corral or herd the fish into one large group where it is easier for them to pick them off one by one. They push the fish closer to the shore, and the shallow water forces the fish up and into the air where the early morning light casts a slight hint of orange on the scales of the fish. This incredible acrobatic behavior of jumping high into the air works, and the majority of the fish in this school live to see another day. But there are other predators here who are watching from above, like this osprey. This is one incredible bird that is built for hunting and eating fish. That large, black-as-night, razor-sharp beak is perfect for picking fish apart, and those impressive meaty legs tipped with razor-sharp black talons mean no fish can escape this bird's embrace. But another equally impressive bird has decided to take its chances with the thousands of mullet in the lagoon. An experienced brown pelican flies in, and its shadow on the water causes the mullet to scatter. A younger, inexperienced brown pelican isn't quite sure what to think of the approaching fish. It knows these fish are food, but this type of behavior is new to the pelican. The older, more experienced adult dives into the school head first and fills its throat pouch with fish. Seeing the success of the more experienced adult, the younger pelican takes to the air in hopes of filling its throat pouch. The fish, seeing the threat coming from the air, continue their acrobatic dance across the surface of the water. The younger pelican dives in, and it's pretty easy to see that this was a huge success because this pelican's throat pouch is now overloaded with fish. Somehow, this bird takes to the air for a very short flight. The added weight of that pouch full of fish is too much to carry, and the young pelican makes an emergency landing back in the water where it deals with its interesting problem of having too many fish in its pouch. Meanwhile, high above the inlet, our osprey with his amazingly beautiful eyes scans the surface of the water for its own breakfast. The first osprey on the scene instantly drops out of the sky and comes crashing into the water. Its fearless dunk into the turbulent waters of the inlet proves successful as this osprey plucks a nice fat fish from just below the surface of the water. It takes to the sky and disappears behind a line of trees where it will happily eat its prized catch. But that wasn't the only osprey in the area. 
Another one has also discovered the plentiful bounty of fish in the inlet, and it too drops out of the sky like a lead balloon where it momentarily vanishes under the surface of the water. And just like the other osprey, this one proves to be quite successful as it plucks a big fat mullet from the water. Look at the size of those legs in comparison to the rest of this bird's body. They're huge. It needs those strong legs in order to pull that large fish just like this one from the water. What an incredible creature. And as the osprey ascends higher into the sky, we get a really good look at those impressive talons and how they fit like a cage around that mullet. I've been capturing all this action with my Nikon D850 and my Nikon 500mm f4 lens. Let's see how well the Nikon D500 and the 500mm f4 handle this action. As soon as I switch out camera bodies, another Osprey appears on the scene, and instead of dropping straight out of the sky, this one comes in at an angle and shows us exactly how it gets things done. It comes in fast, readying its talons for the catch. It slows down just a bit and opens its talons wide. Its legs drop down as it gets closer to the water, and this is what the osprey looks like the moment before it makes impact. Its wings move back, its legs are now fully outstretched, and its talons are spread wide to grab a fish. Without looking, it plunges its legs into the water, creating a shower of water that almost conceals the bird. Was this a success? You bet it was. You can tell this osprey has done this before. It doesn't even know what it has in its talons, but that doesn't stop it from flying away with its catch. As the osprey gets higher, it decides to take a look at what it's caught, and it looks like this osprey has managed to pull a small red snapper from the water. The action in the lagoon and the inlet has been pretty intense. Let's take a short walk over to the mighty Atlantic Ocean and see what's going on. A small group of sanderlings searches for food along the shoreline, and then I notice the amount of fish in the ocean. At first glance, I can't quite believe what I'm seeing. There are thousands of fish, maybe even more, gathering in the surf. Entire waves made up of nothing but fish rise, crest, and start to fall apart. As the waves crumble, I realize the falling pieces are actually fish. I've never seen anything quite like this before. I knew there would be a lot of fish here, but this was far beyond anything I could have imagined. As soon as I started to come to grips with the sheer amount of life in the surf, the water exploded right in front of me. Hundreds of fish take to the air at the same time, some of them jumping over 1.5 meters into the air. I'm completely blown away by what appears to be a massive wall of fish. Everywhere I look, these fish are fighting for their lives by constantly jumping into the air. But what's chasing the fish over here? It looks like these fish are getting attacked from above and below. You can clearly see a pelican coming in fast, and there is a school of larger predatory fish right below the surface of the water. I'll highlight the area where those fish are so you can see them a little better. Do you see them right below the surface? I'm not too sure what those fish are, but I know what this one is. A huge shark is ripping through the surf. I would guess maybe two to three meters or around eight feet in length. I'm not sure what kind of shark this is, but I'm not gonna find out by taking a dunk in the surf. Our pelican though, it didn't notice the shark because it was too busy diving headfirst into the water. Now we have a very interesting food chain at work here. We have the pelican feeding on the fish and a large shark feeding on the fish as well, but that large shark could just as easily take that pelican. The shark kicks it into overdrive and starts moving faster towards the pelican. At this point, I'm almost afraid to watch. The pelican now knows that it's in danger and it must get out of the water, but it has too many fish and too much water in its pouch. The pelican starts dumping the water out and trying to fly. The fish jumping to the left aren't a good sign at all. That shark is fast approaching as the pelican gets out of the water, but the weight of the water and the fish bring the pelican back down and its feet just dangle there along the surface. Part of me wants to look away. I don't want to see this bird get taken by a shark, but I continue to watch and hope the pelican can escape in time. It looks like the pelican has another problem now. Do you see that oncoming wave? It's just over a meter high, which means this pelican now has a meter high hurdle to jump, and that hurdle is loaded with even more fish. But the pelican proves that its power to fly is its greatest advantage as it just barely rises above the oncoming wave and leaves the hungry shark down below to chase the fish. Now it's an osprey's turn to take a plunge into the dangerous waters of the Atlantic, and this osprey didn't linger on the surface. It gingerly plucked a small mullet from the water before flying back towards land where it gave me some absolutely beautiful shots. But this osprey wasn't the only one hunting the rough seas. There was one more right behind this one 
and it had a different plan in mind. This osprey was headed right for a breaking wave, and I quickly moved down the beach to get a better angle on this bird's descent. In classic osprey form, it hit the water with its legs straight out, and I watched as this osprey just patiently waited for the oncoming wave. The wave rose up, and I thought it might break across the osprey's head, but this osprey timed everything just perfectly. It floated right over the passing wave where it immediately took to the sky with its prize. As luck would have it, the osprey decided to fly right towards me and it gave me this incredible close-up with an amazing accidental composition. I like to call this shot the flying V. And my last shot of the day was this one. This osprey just missed its fish and decided to shake it off in midair. I really like the cloud framing the bird and it almost looks like the cloud is a rocket trail coming from this incredibly fast animal. The east coast of Florida is quite the interesting place, and what better way to end the day than a nice golden sunset between some palm trees. That was one of the craziest experiences I've ever had. I've never seen that many fish. I've, I've been out a lot of times when these seasonal migrations of fish go through, but I've never seen quite that many fish or quite that much action in one little spot. Did you have a favorite shot or a favorite scenario that happened if so let me know in the comments below and don't forget to click that thumbs up and share this video that's always very helpful to me if you want to know how i set up my d500 and my d850 for birds in flight check out my website for easy to follow setup guides and if you want to come with me and capture your own images of birds in florida i offer workshops in fall and winter check out my website for details and thanks for watching